Afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to St. Mary's Perivale Tuesday. So it's time for our piano recital. It gives me great pleasure to welcome one of our most popular pianists, Florian Mitria, who's been many times before, fabulous pianist, and he's playing a lovely program of Beethoven, Chopin, and Liszt. He's going to talk about his repertoire, and you're in for a treat. I get off the stage and give a big welcome to Florian. Thank you very much.
So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching today. It's a, an enormous pleasure. And I always, I'm always nervous when I play at St. Mary's Perryville. I've said this all the time. Um, and it's because I know you care. I know everyone that watches these concerts, everyone that helps put it, putting these concerts up um, doesn't need to, but they do it because they care for music. And um, I really, it's, I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying you've got an incredible line of of people playing uh, that could rival any central London venue. And really, um, due to the international nature of, of London, it, it really could rival um, almost any other capital city I in the world. So it's an enormous privilege to be chosen as part of this series, but also an enormous responsibility. So it's always with a bit of nerves. And it's um, it doubled this, this time around. It's doubled by the fact that, of course, a lot of us haven't been performing during the pandemic, uh, but St. Mary's has kept us going. There's been concerts every week, uh, and it's been wonderful to watch my colleagues play and support them from home, and, and uh, it's wonderful to be here to play. And I've played this sonata already in October in the wonderful Perovan Festival, uh, but I enjoy it so much that uh, we, and, and, and it seemed to have been received uh, very well, and we decided to, to reprogram it. And I love playing young Beethoven, because I love challenging the idea that he only became great when he was old. And somehow, you know, we, we, we worship the late sonatas, the late string quartets, and, and for good reason. But, you know, take the slow movement of this very young, it's an opus two, number three sonata, that slow movement. I would argue that, that the same transcendental nature of Beethoven, it's already there. It's the same uh, music that you find in the Arietta in Opus 111. Um, the, the orchestral treatment of the piano, it's the same that it is uh, in the Waldstein or the Appassinata. You, know, you don't have to go to these really famous sonatas, although you know, they're truly marvelous, to find genius Beethoven, even in something as early as, as an Opus 2. Um, and this program, Beethoven Chopin List, is a, is a shortened version of a, of a project I had called Beethoven and Beyond. I really, of course, we should have celebrated him uh, and his legacy last year. But I think it was um, Julian Jacobson who said, look, he was born in December, uh, so we are quite um, uh, allowed to, to celebrate him from December 2020 to December 2021. So I think I, I will keep celebrating him, and, and why not? We're so lucky to have this wonderful music. But the, the project brings together uh, romantic and post-romantic music and Beethoven. And I, I love how the, his music has got reverberations all through the ages. And of course, with, with Liszt, it's, it's pretty obvious. They met, he kissed him on his forehead and, and wished him, a, you know, and predicted him an enormous, early, enormously successful life. With Chopin, the connection isn't immediate, but um, I, I urge you to listen, for example, to the slow uh, mo uh, movement, the lyrical moment in the scherzo, and I think you will realize that that, that lovely singing tone of the piano, that cantabile quality about the tone uh, that we had in the slow movement of Beethoven, that's gone into Chopin. And the orchestral treatment of the piano certainly goes into Liszt. That, that business that none of these two great musicians tried to make the piano sound like, sound like the piano. They were, they were always thinking orchestrally and, and beyond the capabilities of, of the instruments of their age. Um, uh, so often people ask, you know, what, what would Beethoven think of the modern piano? And I think he would be absolutely ex excited by the capabilities of, of the pianos that we have today. So hopefully you will be able, able to notice an overarching theme to the program. Uh, before we go into the uh, list, we're stopping by it and Chopin. And Chopin is a, it's a lonely wolf in, in one way. You know, he, he did try to write for the orchestra, not very successfully. He's very much a piano composer. And I love, I, I love teaching this piece and I love playing this piece, the first scherzo. And scherzo in Italian means joke, of course, but there's nothing, nothing funny about this music. He was in Paris. He had been convinced by his friends to stay in Paris and further his, his career. Uh, because he had a lot more opportunities over there than in, than in Poland. And 
while he was in, in Paris, um, there was turmoil in, in Warsaw, and we know that Chopin felt very strongly about Poland. So he writes this incredibly angry, irritated music, music that's burning with, um, with, with substance. And the lyrical moment, which I have already told you to look for, is a quotation from a Polish Christmas carol. It is the most miraculous thing that you can, you can hear from up, uh, away from the tempest of the outer sections. You get into this lyrical, slow, gentle, tender folk-like folk melody, which I very much hope that you will enjoy. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the program.
much. Well, that was a tour de force. Fantastic uh, recital with gorgeous playing in the middle of the Beethoven, in the middle of the Chopin, and those ravishing bits in the list, and stupendous virtuosity in the Dante Sonata and the first scherzo, and the end of the Beethoven. They're all tough pieces, brilliant playing by Florian, as always, and he presents everything with such charisma and uh, is one of our stars. Thank you very much, Florian. And if you've enjoyed it too, please uh, contribute, continue contributing. I'm extraordinarily grateful to you all, but we need your support.